These are my ingredients for my bubble bars. Um, I should probably call them bubble scoops as I've noticed other people calling the ice cream scoop style. So this is the tapioca starch. It's also called Natrazorb bath starch. Cream of tartar, cream of tartar, potassium bitartrate. A little bit expensive. I've heard you can get it in bulk barn, but I don't live near a bulk barn, so I order mine from Candora Soap. I find if I just order everything at once, I kind of save on shipping and keeps costs down. SLSA, sodium lauryl sulfoacetate. I'm going to show you in a minute the difference between SLSA and SLS. So I have a video I made last year and I'm just going to show you that portion of the video where I show the difference in the in the molecules in the chemistry. So you can see why SLS is an irritant. SLSA may also be an irritant, but not as much as SLS. I'll show you why. Baking soda, corn starch, and then we've got, so those are all the solids, so you mix just like as if you're baking, all the solids together, and then add the liquids. Now, I'm going to add the castor oil first, and then the glycerin to feel. Uh, the glycerin is the ingredient that is keeping a lot of bubble bars out there from hardening up, so you don't want to overdo it on the glycerin. I'm going to use the recipe, but do it as I mix it, I may not use it all. And I, these are the fragrance oils I'm going to use. I'm going to make five different fragranced and colored bubble bars. One is lemon, that will be yellow. Love Spell is going to be rainbow colored pastels. Satsuma will be bright orange. Back here is pink grapefruit, it will be pink. And Mango is going to be white and two different oranges to make it differentiated from the satsuma. So solid orange, multicolored oranges, pink, rainbow, pastel, and yellow. So just for fun, let's make the love spell one together. I'm using Soap Queen's solid bubble bath recipe. I will leave the link to her blog in the description box beneath this video. I'm just modifying it a little bit. I sometimes uh, play around with two things, the cream of tartar and the glycerin amounts. Today I'm just using seven ounces of cream of tartar and otherwise all the other quantities are the same. The glycerin affects drying time and the cream of tartar affects the cookie-like breakable qu quality. So this shows the difference between sodium lauryl sulfate SLS and sodium lauryl sulfoacetate SLSA. The SLS is purely synthetic and man-made and it has a straight line with a sodium at the end and it could be described as a sharp molecule and that's why it's irritating. The sodium lauryl sulfoacetate, it's also man-made, however it's from natural sources. It's naturally derived. It's from coconut and palm and it has one extra oxygen when you compare the two here on the end and it is less sharp and irritating of a molecule than the SLS. So for a bubble bath I find this one is a better choice for sensitive skin and I've had no problem using it. So I just shape it, I scoop it out, 
and then I just make sure it's all solid. I need more pink in these. I don't want to end up with one, one color at the end. I want all colors in all scoops. I'm seeing a lot of white in these first ones. And these, if you don't like a scoop, like that one's pretty ugly really, you just uh, turn it over, squish it in again, and try again. It's a nice thing about this. Not like bath bombs or my bath bombs. I'll show you a video. I leave them overnight in molds. I don't do the whole round bath bomb one at a time method. Um, I have not had that work for me. And similar to the jelly roll of this, I'm like, you know what? I don't have time for that. I, <laughs> I use molds and I'll show you how I do it. It's, you can't make as many, that's the problem. However, I'm currently not, I don't have people knocking down my door asking for them, so. My production method right now is meeting up with demand. I will show you, that one's kind of ugly. A little bit of a perfectionist really in life. Things need to look best I can make them look. See, that's better. I'm going to clean my scoop there. Blue, yellow. So I will do the other ones. And then I'll show you all of them when I'm done. And I'll also show you, I made a video last year of what the, how the suds look from this recipe. So I'll just show you part of that video. No, no reason for me to make a new one. I'll just show you a clip from last year so you don't have to go through the archives looking. There's some people who go into the past so you can, either, you can either find someone's video on YouTube because it was a suggestion on the right-hand side of whatever you're watching, right? Or um, you could hear about it and check it, check out someone's channel. Or you just happen to find them in some way. But the video you watch the first time could be a brand new video or a very old video. But when you subscribe, very few people will go back and watch all the videos from the past year. They just watch the new videos. So, and I know that because I get questions about things that I have put in videos from the past. So, obviously, the person asking the question has only watched that current videos. They haven't gone back to the past to see other ones. So, instead of expecting people to go and watch my other video. I will take clips from it and put it in this one. But there's no reason for me to make a new video with the same subject matter. Now I've just a little bit left here, but I have this scoop which seems to be too big. So I'm going to see if this will make two scoops. I like to make eight scoops out of this recipe. When you price out all these ingredients, uh, where I live, the economy is really not doing so well. People will not pay higher prices for things. So it leaves me with the situation where I have to source, I either have to make things less quantity or source out ingredients better uh, or, you know, save on packaging. You know, it leaves me in that funny situation where I have to figure out how I could sell it to you for the price you can afford, but still give you quality items.
So I'll just show you a quick demo of how to use your bubble bar. Now under running water, break off a piece. See, it crumbles like a cookie. And you just break it off and squish it there under the running water. And it creates these wonderful bubbles and lots of bubbles. You don't need very much bubble bar to get a wonderful bubble bath. I find one scoop lasts me four to five baths. I've really used quite a bit here in the demo. <laughs> so you see the kind of bubbles you get and they last a long time as well. And they're not irritating to my skin anyway. A very sensitive, more sensitive person might not like it, but I don't find it too irritating. So step two is get in the bath and enjoy your bubbles. Thanks for joining me, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye. Take care.